Hello, and welcome to ASIWare's Phileo webinar, Did You Know webinar series six. Uh, thank you for watching the webinar. Uh, to get started today, we're going to be looking at additional fields. We're going to have a brief introduction to them, and I'm going to actually show you on the PowerPoint show, and I'm going to be switching between the PowerPoint show and the system quite uh, regularly. Uh, during this webinar. So anyhow, we're going to go over a brief introduction. I want to kind of uh, tell you where the where you can uh, use additional fields. Then we'll go over the types of additional fields that are available. And then I'm actually going to give you some examples of configuring uh, additional fields. So let's go ahead and switch to the next slide. So a brief introduction to additional fields. The value of additional fields is that it allows your organization the ability to Excuse add Excuse me, uh, Paul. Yeah. I'm not seeing your screen. Oh, well then let's just start over. Yeah. Um, stop the. Hello, and good afternoon. Welcome to ASIWare's webinar series six on the Vallejo platform. Uh, today, we are covering additional fields. Uh, we're going to do a brief introduction. Then the next thing I'm going to show you is where additional fields are located on, chat, on the Vallejo system. Then I will go over the types of additional fields, and then I'll give you some examples of configuring each type. So let's go ahead and have a brief introduction now. So the value of additional fields is that it allows your organization the ability to add additional fields that can store data that is not provided by the standard fields of the Vallejo, plat uh, Vallejo platform. And uh, the difference between additional fields and standard fields is that the standard fields is what comes in the default, system, uh, default setup of the Vallejo system. Additional fields are the fields that are added specific to your agency. So. An example of this that I'm going to show you right now is on the client demographic page. Now, throughout this webinar, I'm going to be switching back and forth between the system and this PowerPoint show. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the system real fast and show you. So this is the demographic page of a client, all right, as standard out-of-the-box default uh, setup of what you get. So if you look down here, the bottom two fields on this screen that are standard fields is respite information and notes. Okay, now let's go over here to the table maintenance page. We'll scroll down this right side and we're going to go to, it's, it's called youth additional fields. It's where you set up additional fields. All right now, just to illustrate what additional field is, I'm, I went through and turned all these off yesterday. I'm going to just go ahead and turn a couple of these back on because at this point I don't want to show you how to configure one. I just want to show you the difference. So. Go ahead and remove these end dates. So now I've turned three additional fields back on on that demographics page. So if we come back here, if I just refresh this page, now if I scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that now we've added three additional fields down at the bottom. So if you remember before I went and turned those back on, the last two fields were the notes and respite information. Again, from the notes field up is all standard fields. And then here are the three additional fields that we just added. So, okay, so that's a brief uh, example of the difference between standard fields and additional fields. Okay, like I said, I'll be switching back and forth between the system and this PowerPoint show. So let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. So the next thing I want to tell you is where they can be used on this system. So the very first thing on our list, client dem demographics, is just what I showed you. Oop, let me go back. Referrals would be the referral screen. So, you know, on a referral screen, we have standard fields that comes with every instance of uh, the Vallejo system and then you can actually add additional fields to the referrals okay the next one is client progress notes uh, and client behavior logs now these are uh, well before I talk about this let's go back to client demographics and referrals in, in this slideshow I, I put in parentheses the word all 
because in, in like the next two have agency specific, what that means is if it says off, they're system wide, all right? If they say agency specific, then you can set up one agency to have these client progress, progress note additional fields and another agency can have different additional fields so that's what agency specific means and if it's branch specific that means one of your branch office can be configured one way with additional fields and another one of your branch offices can be configured a different way okay so let's go back down the list again we covered client demographics and referrals the next thing is uh, client progress notes or client behavior logs these are really the same thing it depends on whether you're doing uh, foster care residential services they just have different names for the different programs and again those are agency specific so what you set up for Boone County you can set something up differently for Fayette County so same way with the incidents um, they're agency specific specific and then in the client care module all those things you track in the client care modules those items themselves can have additional fields and again those are agency specific for our partners that do service placements, you can add additional fields to the uh, service placement screen, and that's system wide. Uh, same way, if you're tracking, if you're doing services and you're tracking the residents of your clients, then you can add additional fields to the resident screen. And again, system wide. Now, the next four that I'm talking about are branch specific. You can actually go to a branch office to configure these. So you can set up additional fields on foster parent. You can set up additional fields on homes. You can set up uh, additional fields within foster parent requirements. So if you have a requirement for monthly quality assurance, then you can sit there and add additional fields to the monthly quality assurance. Same way as you can do with the foster home uh, requirements. You can add additional fields to foster home requirements. And again, those are branch specific. You can also add additional fields to the other people involved with a home or persons, we just call them persons. And you can add additional fields to those person requirements. You can add additional fields and those are system wide, all right? The person ones are system wide. For users, you can add additional fields to a user screen. They're branch specific in the same way with the user requirements, they're branch specific. Medications, you can add additional fields to the medication screen, and that's system-wide. Authorizations, you can add additional fields on the authorization screen, they're system-wide. And the last thing is a little bit more confusing, it's client contacts. So, uh, with client contacts, you can do it one of two ways. We recommend you do it by the contact type. So, if you have a contact type called face-to-face, -face, then you would add the additional fields you want on the screen to that face-to-face -face type. So you can have one set of additional fields for face-to-face, -face, another set for home visit, another set for group therapy, another set for individual therapy, so on and so forth. The other way you can do it with contact types is you can just do it at an agency. The same way you would do these two, you could do that at an agency level. Um, so if you find five additional fields at an agency level, and that agency has five contact types associated with it, all five of those types would have those five additional fields. It, it doesn't give you quite the flexibility as doing it at the contact type field. Now to, to show you what I'm talking about, uh, between all the, the things that you do uh, across the whole system and then the things you do at a branch office it's like that youth demographics page that client demographics page you do here all right so that's in the journal system setup the users if you want to add additional fields to users let me back up so you're going to click on a branch they're done at a branch level so here's your branches so you're going to go to your one branch and you're going to say user additional fields so then you'll set them up here. And we're actually, when I set up one of each type, I'm gonna do it right on this particular one. So uh, so if it's a branch thing, then you come to the branch office you wanna do it for and set them up there. So that means that Dayton can have five additional fields, Columbus could have 10 additional fields, Canton could have 35 additional fields, and all those additional fields can be different things. Uh, and they would only show up on users that are assigned to those branches. So, 
So let's go back to the PowerPoint show. Uh, well, one more thing. So the other place you can do it, well, one of the other places at an agency level. So if you come in here, here's your payers, your case management set up. If you had to edit, now you have these buttons here to go in and add additional fields. So to do incidents, this is where you do your incidents. To do the progress notes or behavior logs, you come here. If you want to, for contact, set up those additional fields to where um, every type has the same fields, then you would do it here. And then for client care, you would click on this. It's going to open a new window with all your client care items. So these are all the items you get. If you hit that little pencil here, then you come down here and start building your additional fields. Now this particular item has a bunch of additional fields in there already. So that kind of shows you um, where when, when I say all agency specific branch specific what I'm talking about the last one I need to show you is if you're doing it by contact type so let me get back to the table maintenance page come down here the contact type set up and here's where you define your contact types and where you can build additional fields per type so this is a type these are the additional fields on that type here's another type the additional fields on that type so on and so forth uh, so this doing it here gives you the most flexibility uh, in regards to your contact types and, and additional fields that you want to track on your contact pages so okay so that's um, where they can be used and I kind of briefly touched on how do you get to there to uh, set those up so let's go ahead and go move on to the next slide so now these are the types of additional fields so when you're setting up an additional field these are the types of fields you have available to set up so let's uh, just quickly look down this list I'm not going to read them all to you because we're going to actually step through each type here on this PowerPoint show real fast um, well actually I do need to read through these to make sure you understand exactly what they are a checkbox field a checkbox field fields their single checkbox to indicate something is true so if you need to know is the client blind all right you can set up a field checkbox field that says is client blind and right beside it on the screen would be a place for them to check all right but when you're setting up the additional field, whatever title you give it is what you see on the screen when you're entering the data with a check checkbox beside it. Date fields is just what they are, what they say they are. They're a date field. Digital signatures. This allows your staff to digitally sign a document. And again, you're going to see sample of these here in just a few minutes. Document upload fields. Fields. These are the fields you set up to where a user can upload a scanned document into the system. A drop down list is for picking a value. It's a single pick. You can't pick more than one value. It's a, a single value pick. A dynamic field. This links to other information in child tracks. So let me just show you something real fast on the system. Let's go back and let's look at uh, Carly's demographic page. So if you wanted to take like this biological father information, let's say it was filled out and you wanted to take that and show it on something else well you can do that using a dynamic field that's what we mean by dynamic field if you wanted to put you know the home phone number somewhere because you defined it on the demographic page but you may want to see the information somewhere else in child tracks well anywhere where you can do additional fields you can set up a dynamic field and show a lot of this information so okay email fields this is a place on a screen where you can just write a narrative, hit an email button, and it's going to be sent. The system will send out emails to predefined email rules, and, and you'll learn more about that here in a few minutes. This insert uh, header field, it just inserts a header on the screen in the printable report. It's all done. So it's just a way to break up uh, you know, the information a little bit and give it some nice sections. Um, Hyperlink fields, this allows you to put a link to some kind of external resource. It could be a website, it could be a file share in your internal network, uh, just on the screen, and you're going to see samples of these again. 
uh, it's just a place a user can click on that hyperlink and it's going to open a new window and take them somewhere where they can look at additional information. A multiple checkbox. This is similar to a drop down list other than with a multiple checkbox you can have you can select multiple values not just one single uh, value. Paragraph fields. These are very handy and these paragraph fields can actually be used to improve your quality. You literally can, on all the screens that uh, support additional fields on child tracks, you can put paragraphs of information in there. And when you set up additional field, you're also going to either check a box or leave it unchecked that says show on printable report. So let's say on uh, treatment plan, you wanted to put a set of instructions for your staff above a certain field. Well, they would see those instructions on the screen. If you don't check that show on report button, then it will not show up on the printable report. So it's a great way to improve your quality, uh, to improve the quality of the, of the data that's getting entered into the system. Signature lines just provides... Uh, Lines on a printable report for people to sign, and you'll see some samples of those. Signature capture is a place where people can actually sign on the screen like you do in a grocery store when you use a credit card. Then text box is used to uh, capture narratives. You know, that's where they write in their narratives. And then the last uh, type of additional field we have is anywhere on the screen so we can show what the client's current age is. So. So those are the types. Now let's walk through here and look at each one individually. This is a checkbox, a single checkbox. So this would be like, is the client, or the client is blind, right? If you check it, that means the client's blind. If they're not blind, then you leave it unchecked. I know that's not a very good example, but I think it makes the point. So that's the single checkbox field. A day field is just what it looks like, and this is a calendar. If you click on that, it's going to open up a calendar that you can actually Pick the date, you don't have to type it in there. So, digital signature field. Now, the way this works, and I need to, I need to talk about these for a few minutes. So, like, if I was to sign a document on Child Tracks, I would just enter my PIN here, okay? So, let's say my PIN was 1111. Hopefully, that's nobody's PINs, but I would enter that. I'd click this button, and if that PIN matches my, the, the, username and password that the person's logged in with, then it will validate that PIN, right? And it's going to actually, at that point, that document is digitally signed, all right? Now, when you do a printable report, you'll actually see a signature, and you'll see that it was signed, this document was signed on uh, May 10th at 1218 p.m. Now, another thing we can do is these digital signature additional fields. So, let's say on the screen there was five fields above this of narratives or let's say it was a uh, individual therapy note so they have and let's say they do DAP therapy so they have the D field the A field and the P field right so the therapist fills all those out comes down here puts their pin in validates the pin as soon as they save that therapy note those fields that digital pin can lock those fields down to where people can't edit them and possibly not even see them. So it can enforce restrictions on the fields above it. Now, it can't enforce restrictions on the field below it, but anything above it. So, so not only can you capture a digital signature, the digital signatures can help protect the information that was entered. So. The next type is a document upload. It's pretty straightforward. You click this button. It's going to allow you to go out to your PC, find the document you want to upload. You highlight it, hit the OK button, and it's going to upload it here. If it gets an error, it tells you right at the top it got an error. But here's the document you upload. If you need to view it later, click the View button. If you need to get rid of it and you have the right permissions, you can delete it. So, so that's the document upload field. A drop list field. So this is... Uh, a single pick list. So if you look at the setup of this field, I have three values you can pick from. This is a, a picture of that field. So you know, up, if you go back, uh, I can't hit that down arrow to show you, but there's value one, value two, and value three. So when you're filling out drop down field, if the value is not there that you want, you just hit this arrow, pick the value you want, it'll jump up there, and that's a drop down, uh, drop list field. So. Dynamic fields, I told you on that client's demographics page. Let me pull that back up again. 
So if this was actually filled out, three, four, five, and I save that, and then uh, when I'm looking at certain things, I might want to know that information. This is how it would be displayed, okay? So it's just going to go out to that demographics page, find what those values are, pull it back, and show it on the current form that you're looking at. That's probably one of the most confusing things about additional fields is what dynamic fields do for you. But they really give you a lot of flexibility on what you're doing. So, Okay, an email field. Now, this works in conjunction with email rules. So, like... Um, on any of the screens, it could be any of the, the screens that can have additional fields. You can build one of these fields to where the user entering the data for that particular item can put a note in here, hit this button, and it's going to send that note to whoever is defined for that email rule. So like when you set up the additional field as an email field, in the, in the little paragraph box, there's a place that you can type in the name of the email rule. All right. And so let's say it's called webinar. Right. So I fill this out, I hit the email, the system knows, oh, that's the email rule webinar. And if you look on research, which we'll do here in a little bit, uh, the email rule for webinar goes to me. So it's just a quick, easy way you can do some fast communications and not let things drop through the crack. So again, let me go back to that real fast. This, this information is not stored with the item. Once you hit that email button, it's gone. All right, the only history you have of all that is the email that you got in your inbox, okay? And this, you can turn this to where it doesn't show up on a printable report. Again, it was, we were strictly built for internal communications. Okay. Header field. I told you a header field is an easy way to split up stuff on a screen. This is what a header field looks like. That's exactly a header field. Multiple checkbox. So now this thing um so let's say this was uh, the title of this field was mood and um i don't remember the terms that go with that but let's say there was three of them three moods that the client exhibited that you need to check you can check all three it allows you to check more than one so a paragraph field. This is the, the type of field I told you. You can just load up the system with a bunch of instructions. Well, that's an additional field type of paragraph. So literally, if, if this was a medical exam and there was something very important you want to tell your users that you, you know, that you see a problem with, a lot of times, a lot of places where these are used is when you see typical data entry problems that it's just, it's not, it's just a lack of knowledge on the user's part. Well, you can put that knowledge in these paragraph fields on that medical field or on that uh, client care item to track physicals and, and help alleviate that problem. And again, when you set this up, you can also set it up not to show on printable reports. So, signature line, uh, additional fields, here's what they are. So, when you set up a signature line in that little paragraph box, you're going to type case manager, hit enter, type supervisor, hit enter, type custodian, uh, hit enter, and type GAL, and hit enter. And, that, and you'll see what I'm talking about when we go in there and look at it. And then when you pr do a printable report, this is what shows up, okay, on the printable report. So if you need wet signatures on something, give, you know, whatever the title should be for that person who needs to sign it, put it in that box. And when you hit that printable report button, this is what you get for signature lines. So, okay, the next one is signature capture field. And again, this is like you do at a grocery store. You have some kind of little way to capture a live signature, right? And there's a place for somebody to type their name and then, the, you know, the whatever needs to go after their name there. So it's a quick, easy way to capture signatures right on the screen. Okay, and then this would transfer to the um, printable report also if you have that checkbox checked. So those are a brief, inter oh, yeah, one more type, text box. So we have, uh, when you set up a text box additional field, you have some options on character size. You have 25, 50, 200, 1,000, and 7,000 character. Uh, 7,000 is like a page and a half of full text, all right? So, um, I don't have a picture of the 7,000 box. It looks just like this 1,000-character uh, box. So. But those are text boxes. So, 
And then the last one is the client age. It will show, you can actually set up a dynamic field that show the client's current age on the, on the areas that you can set up additional fields. That can be very, very handy. Um, and we have a lot of new partners that use uh, this, this function on a lot of their forms so that the person entering the data, it's right in front of their face how old that client is. So, or even on the incidents, I see a lot of them on the incidents, they wanna know what the client's current age is, so. Okay, now, so those were the types. Now here, when you set up additional field, these are the things that you have to configure. So I just wanna introduce these to you real quick. Uh, we should be done with this by 1230, which gives me the last half hour to w have you watch me set up all the different types of additional fields. So the first thing you configure when you set up an additional field is display order. And all the display order means is, this is first item I wanna see, second item, third item, fourth item, right on down the screen. Now. What I recommend though, don't, oops, let me go back, uh, don't start with one. I, I I personally, when I set stuff up, I step them in increments of 10. So my first field is a 10, display order 10, my second field is 20, my third field is 30, so on and so forth. And the reason I do that is two years from now, if I need to go in and add four fields, uh, early in the form and I numbered them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I have to reorder all those to get those new four fields in there. Where if you did step it in, in increments of five or ten, you have nine spots that you can add new fields later on. So it can just save you time later on if you step those now. Now these next two uh, column number and number of columns in row, they work together. So like this table, all right, this would be two columns, okay? Uh, so the column number would be two, or no, the column number, It so this would be two. For this table, this column here would say two. Now for this, uh, if this was the first thing I want to see, then it would have a column number of one, and if this was the second column, then this would have a column number of two. So it's basically going to be one of two, then the next additional field would be two of two. Or if you were doing three columns, and you can only go up to three. So if the first one would be one of, one of three, second additional field would be two of three, third additional field would be three of three. Okay, and then screen size has to do with that text box type, you know, where you can set it to 25, 50, 100, so on and so forth. Okay, description location on this on the actual fields. Let me back up a second. So, like, this description is above the actual data, okay? Now, your, your choices for description location is above or beside. So, if you pick beside then that 21 would be shown over here to the right of the actual description. So, okay, then you have a screen description. So it, the, the field can say one thing on the screen and there's also a field if you wanted it to say something else on a printable report or they can both say the same thing. Here's that uh, thing I told you, if you like if you're using that paragraph type of field to put instructions everywhere and you don't want it to be on the printouts, then don't check that box, right? And then a lot of these fields too, especially the narrative fields, if you want to see the previous value, so if, let's say this was uh, something that you do monthly, all right? You do it every fifth day of the month and you had a field for um, was there any frequent visitors in the home? Right, and so when they enter the next one, the following month, if you wanted it to pull that comment from the previous one, then you would check this box, okay? And this would be where you um, actually, if you're setting up a dynamic field type, this would be where you select what, what field you're talking about, and you'll see that. Again, paragraphs, I've kind of um, talked a lot about this. And then we go into the restriction stuff. And then you're going to have a start and an end date for that additional field. Now, very, very important information here. If oh, if you want to quit using, let's say you had a field ABC set up on your treatment plans, and you decide, we don't want that there anymore. Don't delete the field. Come in here and put an end date, okay? Just end it. If you're going to actually change these descriptions, you may want to really think through that because 
what you may want to do is end what they are today, just put an end date here, add a new field with the new descriptions. Because if, if you just edit the descriptions, what people had typed in the past, that information doesn't go away, it's still there. So if you look back at it, you know, if you change the description from home to um, apartment, well, those are, you know, have two different meanings. So if there's something you don't want to do anymore, end it, all right? and just put a new one in there. If I put an end date on any additional field as of today, and I go look at that screen, it won't be there. So uh, that's the best way if you need to change something, don't just edit it, you know, edit the descriptions, end it, set up a new one. Now, if you end this one and you set up a new one, you're probably gonna want it in the same display order. You can reuse that number, all right? You don't have to give it a different number because this one is ended, so. And then the last thing is, and I didn't spell additional field right, uh, additional field drop list used to configure the values for drop down and multi list check boxes. So on those types that are a drop down list or multi checklist, you got to be able to find the values that make up those lists somewhere. And that's what that last part's talking about. So, so those are the controls used to do it. Right. This is the screen you do it on. This has everything I just told you about. The only difference, I didn't go over this. This, oh, I keep, keep clicking on this thing like it's my, the system, it's a PowerPoint show, so it changes slides. Now, if you hit that down arrow, that's where you set the type, all the different types of additional fields. I didn't go over that because it's pretty self-explanatory. So this is what we're going to be using quite a bit for the rest of this webinar. So that's Go ahead and look at the last slide. So what I'm going to do, we're going to get out of this PowerPoint show and we're going to pull the system back up. And we're going to configure additional fields for uh, uh, foster parents in the Norfolk branch on our research system. So we're every, we're, I'm going to set up one field of every type. Might do a couple text box fields uh, and maybe one or two other fields just so you can see some variations of them. So we'll be doing it for foster parents in our Norfolk branch. So let's pull a system back up to to do this. I'm going to go ahead and close that. I want to, on this one, I want to go look for a parent real fast. So let me find a parent in our Norfolk branch and put a wild card in here. So we turn any search. Okay, so here's Cindy Jones. So if we click on Cindy, so this is the parent details page right here. So the standard fields out of the box are the ones you see here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start adding additional fields below here, and I'm going to add one of every type. So let's go back to table maintenance. That's the, the foster parent stuff is done at a branch level. So if you come in here to, at the branch, pick Norfolk. And I want to do foster parent additional fields. So here's the setup screen for that. So the first field I'm going to add is a checkbox. And I'm just going to label these what type they are. Okay. Now there's two ways you can do this. I'm going to step through them one at a time. I could sit here and just, if you know the titles of your fields, you can just add all the fields all together real quick and then go in and configure them. I'm just, for the sake of this uh, webinar, I'm going to do it this way though. So we're going to do uh, screen type checkbox. And you know what? Well, I'll go ahead and do uh, the column thing so you can actually see it on these first two. And if you're doing a checkbox, screen size does not matter. So I'm setting up a, a, an additional field called checkbox. Here's the, the report description, screen description. I want that this title over the checkbox. I want it to show on a report. Now, the, that foster parent details page doesn't have a report, so I'm not going to be able to show you a report, but that's fine. Now, here's an important piece. This start date, what I recommend, unless this is something brand new that only happens on clients getting placed now or parents that are coming you know, into the process now forward, you can use today's date, but I always recommend going back, and here's why. So if you have, if this particular additional field is based on some type of date setup, like in a client care item or a foster parent requirement item, and if you don't go back far enough, you may be doing something from last month, and that if you put the effective date today, you won't see this field for last month because the effective date's not 
you know, you, you said, hey, this is last month. So that field wasn't effective last month. So I highly recommend always going back. All right. So let's go ahead and update this. And actually, um, yeah, that's fine. So the next type of field we're going to do is a date field. So let me come over here and add a date field. Now I got to add this to be able to show you on the false parent screen because I did it columns one of two. So now that's that's going to try to default just counting straight up and just you manage that display order well and you won't have any problems adding the stuff later. So and again, I always step them by ten. Uh, I think maybe one of my guys always likes doing five. But... So let's go ahead and add that. These are pretty simple ones to set up, so there's not a whole lot to show you. Now let me go back to this foster parent details page. Now, notice that the notes field is the last thing there, so let me refresh that. Now, if we scroll down here, those are two fields I just added. So you have a single checkbox, you have a calendar or a date field, and there's the calendar function. Okay, and this is a two column setup. All right, so let's go back and add some more types. Uh, next one, digital signatures. I want to do a digital signature next. Huh, gignature. I spell it right. Okay, so I want to set this to 30. And I'm going to leave it as one. I'm, I'm not going to put that. You should not put signatures in more than one uh, column. Above, we're going to leave it called that on both places, show and report. Let me go ahead and change this to one, one, two thousand. Update. Okay, now let's go back here, refresh this, and you can see a digital signature field. Okay, I'm not associated, and that's the other thing. We can lock down who can sign these things. I'm not associated with the Norfolk branch, so it's not going to let me do that. So give me a second. Let me go out and fix that real quick. Missed that in my prep yesterday. Oh, no, I am. Hmm. Okay, I'm not sure why that won't work right for me, but that, I can show you what it, uh, on something else what that looks like. Now, this is where that dig digital signature would be. So let's keep moving forward, and I'll, I'll go back and show you. So, okay, the next one we're going to do is a document upload. Now, this would be 40. Set to type the document upload. And again, you can have different descriptions. And for this type, none of this other stuff's really that important. So let's go ahead and put in start date. Update. Let me go ahead and add a couple more before we switch back. We'll do a drop list next. Now this one's a little different than what we've done so far, and I'll show you why. So this is going to be display order 50. So drop list. All right. So let's add that. Now let's go look at the parent details page at that drop list that's going to show up. And there's going to be a problem with it. The problem is there's no values, okay? See how they're blank? So if we go back to the setup screen, down here is where you can add the values. We'll put value one, add, value two, add, value three, 
add. Again, this will default to whatever the start date of the additional field is, all right, the values, because I want to show you something about the end dates and stuff real quick. So let's refresh this. So now you have the values available for that additional field. Now let's go back to the setup screen real quick. Let's say, let's put an end date of uh, 5, 9, 2019 on that one. So now if we go back to the parent details page, well, let's go ahead and add a new one. Okay, now let's go back to the parent details page, refresh it, and you will see that now value 3 is no longer an option, but value 4 is, okay? So we turned off value 3. And we turned on value four. Now, if that was a mistake and you really want three back there, just delete that out of there, hit update. And when you go back, refresh that page, now you're going to see value three is back. So, okay. That was really a good way to uh, give a sample of that. So the next field we want to set up is a dynamic field. So this one, this is... Uh, one of my favorite type of additional fields, okay? So this would be 60. Now we're on a false parent, so what type of dynamic information do we want to see? So let's see what's available. So I said to type the dynamic, and I'm not doing any columns or any of that anymore. And again, screen size is only uh, relevant to a text box. So when we do text box, then we've got to set those screen sizes. So we're going to do dynamic field. And then this window here, which we haven't touched yet, Shows you all the different stuff that we have that are dynamic fields for for uh, for foster parents. Okay, so let's see. These pre people probably do not have any of this stuff set up because I don't have any of this stuff set up. And um, I'm going to go ahead and just show date tracker stuff because I'll just enter one real quick. So. Let's update that. Now let's go back. Parent details. There's that. Uh, it's getting an error, so let me try something real fast. I don't know if I actually have that configured for uh, Norfolk or not. So let me add a. I'm going to put this as expiring at the end of the month. Save. Now let me go back here. Refresh this. Okay, I'm getting it. Error, but that what it should show is anything that's under date tracker. It should pull everything that's underneath date tracker. I may have something wrong in the way I have stuff configured for the Norfolk. So, but yeah, that's a dynamic field. Okay, uh, they're very very handy. It allows you to really pull information stored in other places, child tracks, to places that you're actually working. So. Uh, So anyhow, okay, the next type of field we want to add is an email field. And I do have um, an email rule set up that is called webinar. So that's what we'll set this up as. Email field. All right, I'll change this to... And now, if you're doing an email field in this paragraph here, this tells you the uses for this box, all right? So paragraph, if you're setting the type to paragraph, then this is where you can put those instructions. If, you, if you're setting this to the signature lines, remember the slide I showed you that had case manager, 
uh, GAL, I forget, uh, forget who else, but anyhow, so you would spell that out, case manager, and so on and so forth, which you're going to see. So I'm, I'm not going to waste our time talking about those others right now. And a hyperlink, you would define a hyperlink here. So let's go ahead and update this. Let's go to that parent details page and see what happens. So here's that email filling. Click that button and notice how the information's gone now. Once you, like I said it doesn't save it, it doesn't keep it, it's just you can set these fields up to have quick internal communications. Now, if you're doing that, then you really don't want that to show on a report. You don't you don't want them to see that blank field out there on a report. So uh, let me see if that's come into my inbox real quick. Okay, it hasn't come in yet. Oh, I think it just did. Nope, I'm getting too excited. Okay, but anyhow, it's going to shoot me. I, I'm pretty sure I set my email address up for that email role webinar, so it's going to shoot me an email. So, okay, the next type we want to look at is a header field. So let's go ahead and set up our header. This would be 80 header. Start date 1 1 2000. Update. Now let's go refresh this. And here's that header field. So. It just puts a dark line across and whatever value you put for screen description would show there. On a report, you'd see the report description, not the screen description. So, header, hyperlink. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add this. I'm not going to be able to set this up because I'd have to go find the actual uh, command in another spot to, to build this hyperlink. Let me update this. I'll actually go out and find that real quick. It won't take long. So this is where you would go to, to update uh, client care, add additional fields to client care. Here's the actual syntax for that. If you're setting up a hyperlink on one of these, you may need to log a ticket to have our help desk um, with you, help, help you with the command to actually put in there. So let me paste that in there, update it. Now if we go look at that parent details, Refresh that. Here's that hyperlink to WebMD. So if a user clicks on that, it opens in a new tab and takes you out to WebMD. All right. So there's WebMD. I'm not going to leave that open. But. Okay, so that's a hyperlink. Uh, next one is multiple checkbox. Um, I'll tie. Help if I spell it right. Okay. So I set this at a hundred. Multiple checkbox. I didn't even get it right. 
So the first thing you want to do before you build your list is update the top part. Once you update that, then you can come down here and start adding your values. Okay, so that's a multiple checkbox. Let's go check that out. Check out our checkbox. So if I get the right screen, parent details, let's refresh that. So here's that. So if you want to click multiple values, you can save it. And then this saves those values. So, okay. <clears throat> the next one is a paragraph. This is where you can actually put instructions. Now, if you do use this as instructions, I highly recommend that you uncheck that box, okay? Now, in here is where you would put your instructions. I can't stress enough. That, um, this one type of additional field, how it can really help improve quality control of the notes that people are writing. I mean, you know, most people want to do good work. It's just some people uh, may be lacking in a little experience. Well, if you give them some help on these screens, then you're going to get better work. So it would show right here your instructions. And then again, if this was something was a printable report, if you printed it, if you don't check that show on report button, then those instructions wouldn't be on the printable report. But the county people, whoever you're sending those reports to, are going to see that brilliant narrative that you helped them on the screen figure out how to write. So, okay, next type is going to be a signature line. So let's do, uh, well, I don't need to do those here. I'm going to switch back to the PowerPoint show because there's not a printable report. Again, the signature lines on a printable report will look like this. I'll go ahead and set it up so you can see how you can space or get a line for each one of these type people. But uh, I'm not going to be able to show you on a printable report. So let's go ahead and add signature lines. Okay, so if you wanted a place for the case manager to sign, for the foster parent to sign, for the uh, supervisor to sign, that's all you have to do. Uh, of course, I'm going to put that one one. update and then when you see the printable report you would see case manager foster parent supervisor with this format so okay so that's signature lines the next thing I want to show you is signature capture again to use signature capture you have to have some type of device to capture the signature now what you're going to see here in a second is I'm actually going to use my mouse to sign that screen when I get this set up. So a mouse can do it. It's just hard to get a good signature, at least for me, as bad as I shake. It's hard to get a good signature with a mouse. But if you have a laptop with a little touchpad, you can actually do it on the touchpad. So, or if you have touch screens, you can do it on touch screen. The other option for signature capture is you can buy Topaz. Uh, Topaz, the company Topaz makes these signature capture devices. So before you buy those, though, talk to us to make sure you get the right model. So, so I'm signing this with my mouse. All right. If I don't like it, I can clear it and do it again until I get it the way I want it. And then once I got it the way I want it, type my name here, hit save, and you just did a signature capture. So. Okay, the next type I want to do is a text box. And we're going to do quite a few text boxes, actually. So let me do text box 25. 
not test, it's a text. So let's go ahead and configure this one. Now, it's the first time we've had to worry about another field, right? So that's tech box, and that's where this comes into play. Now, I defaulted to 25, so I'm gonna leave that alone because that's the type I'm setting up is a 25 character text box. But I'm gonna add a couple more before we go look at it, so. Let me do a text box 100. I won't do every value. I don't want to bore you all to death. So now, if you're like me, I sometimes forget my last display order. Just click on it. You can go back and set it. Text box 100 or 200. Okay, this is 200, not 100. Let's change that. I'm all about trying to be consistent too. So above show and report, set this to one, one two thousand. And I want to add one more, and then we'll be done with the text box. One thousand. Or no, we'll do seven thousand. I forgot my display order again, so this is going to be 150. Set this to 7,000. One, one, two thousand. Update. Now let's go look at that parent details page. And you're going to see those text box. So there's the 25, the 200, and the 7,000. Okay, the last uh, type of additional field is the client age. This is not a client, so I can't put it on here. But we can go look at, um, we're going to go over here. And we're going to add an additional field to this medical exam real quick. And set it up to client age. So let's just refresh, come down here and configure it real fast, and we'll go look at one of these real fast. So we're going to set this to client current age. I'm going to go ahead and set that show and report. Do one, one, two thousand. Now, I didn't go over any restriction stuff. There's no restriction stuff on homes, parents, and staff. But when you're talking about clients, this is how you would set up restrictions. And the first time you want to do this, work with our help desk now um, so if you set up restrictions here then with your digital signatures you can actually come in here and say okay be between display order of 10 and 140 when it's digitally signed I want those locked all right um, so and there's different ways you can lock it but it, it's kind of tricky to use these so if you you know for you folks that are creative and want to try this by all means, try it. It can save you a lot of time, and it really opens up the, the functions and features available to you. But just, you know, shoot a ticket to the help desk and say, hey, here's what I'm trying to do. Walk me through the user restriction stuff. It, 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 like I said, it's kind of uh, tricky. I, I may, on a coming up webinar, just make this like a 15 or 20 minute section in an upcoming webinar. But right now, we're about out of time as we sit. So I don't want to do it right now. So let me uh, go here to foster care census, find Tom Cruiser. There's Tom, click on his name and go look at his medical exam. And we should, if I did, if I picked the right agency, we should see client's current age at the bottom of the screen. Yep, client current age is 24. All right, uh, so that kind of concludes this webinar. Thank you, and um, you'll be receiving the email soon with a link to the recording. Thank you. Any questions? I'm sorry. Is there any questions? I'm turning everybody's mic on. I'm trying to, but it's not letting me. 
Oh, you guys muted yourself today, so you have to unmute yourself if you have any questions. So, okay, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.